What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Ark Survival Evolved. So it's a little bit dark right now, but the moon is going down, so that's pretty good for it. I think that the sun should be coming up very, very shortly if I understand my astronomy at all, and we'll be able to build a base. Now you might be saying to yourself, I thought we already did that in the previous episode. Well... I can't get back into single player right now. Single player is not really working, and so unfortunately I had to roll on another server. I've been playing for about two hours. It took me a little while to catch up, but we're good. We're fine. I'm going to play on this server from now on until my personal server gets set up. Once that gets set up, it's going to be a PvE server where I and you, the Nerd Castle, can hang out together and hunt some big dinos. But for right now, let's focus on the task at hand, because if I don't, I'm afraid I'll never get anything done. I don't fear it that much. I say that I'm afraid it'll happen, but it's more of like a metaphorical afraid. It's not like a real quaking in my boots afraid so we're actually in the exact same spot that we were and since we're on a pvp server right now i decided that instead of building a house down on the beach where we were before it would be a good idea to move it up to here kind of like up into the hills a little bit just so that it can't be seen quite as readily now you can't get up here from any other direction except for through the forest which means that i should be able to fence it off and make this pretty much inaccessible if i really 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 want to dedicate the time and resources to it and i think that i will Simply based, I know that sentence sounded like I was going to finish, but then I had to breathe, unfortunately. It is what it is. Sometimes you got to breathe. But anyways, I forgot what I was saying now. Well, damn, that's a little bit unfortunate, but we'll figure it out along the way. I was saying I was going to fence it out. I probably will. That's what it was. I probably will dedicate the resources to getting it finished off just because you've got to grind levels in this game anyways. So you might as well like be on it. I don't know how big I want my base to be. How many more of these can I make? Several. And I think I have four right now. If I go up to... Well, see, it's the foundations that really cost you. There we go. We'll go up by a couple more. They are a little bit heavy, though, and so unfortunately, I may have to weigh myself down in order to complete this task. We also need some sunlight. Up until we have some sunlight, it's going to be very, very difficult to see. I will say that the developers have gone great. I mean, aside from single player not working for me right now, the, the developers have done a really, really good job at making sure, like, the game has actually optimized quite a bit in about 72 hours. I've gone from getting about 10 frames at any given moment to getting about 30 to 40 out of it on medium settings within 72 hours, and so it's nice to see that the developers are actually, like, working on it and getting it done however for right now there's still some optimization that needs to be finished off I'm gonna put one in right there one in right there one in right there oh there it is it's starting to look good in it starting to look good I'm a little bit worried I won't be able to put anything after what happened last time I'm a little bit terrified that my floors won't go down the way that I want them to but I think a 3 by 3 should be more than enough I don't want to be greedy about the area that I take right now especially given the fact that it puts a giant target on your back people see something that takes a lot of resources to build and they're just like hmm I wonder if I can get in there and if I can I bet there's some really good goodies in there I mean good is in the word goodies so you would assume that they would always be good is there any type of bad goody Hmm, I don't think there is. So anyways, let's chop down some trees because I need some more wood real fast so that we can do a couple more foundations. I might have to pick up some stones around here too because I think I dropped all of mine because I was over encumbered a little bit ago. Little bit of a disappointment there, but yeah, we're like level 6 or 7 right now. I apologize, D'Lo will not be in this episode. I know you saw that thing that I put up where I trained D'Lo. I love D'Lo very, very deeply, but I think we can get another one. It shouldn't be too difficult, so while D'Lo is irreplaceable. Perhaps we'll get ourselves another dinosaur friend. I think my pickaxe is about to break. It's unfortunate, but it might happen. So how are we looking on resources right now? I've got a thatch roof. I need like one more foundation. That's pretty much all that I need. Yeah, there it is. I think it was the thatch that I was actually lacking, and so I was lacking in the thatching. I like how that rhymes almost. God, it is so dark right now because the sun can't get through the hills, but I think that is going to work to our benefit. It's going to give us a little bit of cover when it comes to other players dicking around and trying to murder us. Okay, so I needed one more. So we need two more of these little foundations. Okay, and so the foundation is literally laid. We're not going to be metaphorical about it today. I'm too tired. I'm just too tired. There will be no metaphoricalisms right now. There we go. My character's name is Anne because I'm an unoriginal bastard and I forgot to name her when I was making her. I was in such a rush just to get back into the game and play. I forgot to put my shoes on too, see? I was in a rush because I was supposed to be recording like an hour and a half ago and then I was like, oh no, I can't play single player. Well then, and then I had to sort out what I was going to do. And I'm like, well, I'll just roll on like the closest server and there's actually an ARC server like right next to my house apparently, which is pretty badass. So I need a doorway. So let's craft one of those. We could also use a thatch door, so we'll craft one of those as well. And I think that should probably use up a great deal. Oh, that doesn't take that much thatch. Did it use up our wood? Is that the problem? Okay, so we're pretty much out of wood. Let's decide where we want the door to go. I'm thinking over here on this side. I like it when it's offset. 
Like, some people very much she's moaning again. Why is she moaning? Is it my fault? Probably. I didn't feed her very well. That's the problem. She needs a little bit of the old azul berry. I call them azul berries, but, you know, they're azul berries. Amar berries. We have plenty of food right now. I think we should be more or less good. I've got a bunch of meat, and that's so we can train another D-Lo, because I found that actually if you have, like, a team of raptors that help you fight, oh my god, it is so amazing. They can draw aggro for you, and it seems like they get much, much better at fighting as you train them. Like, seriously, like... The difference between a normal Dilo or a Dilophosaur and, like, one that you've trained for yourself, it seems like they attack faster, and it seems like they're a lot more badass. I don't know. It might be a perceptional thing for me. But I really felt like once I had Dilo all trained, it was a much, much better dinosaur than it was when it was wild. And it only leveled up once. Like, there wasn't that much of a change. So, anyways, let's chop down some trees. We'll get some wood real fast. Obviously, I usually try not to get wood on camera. I would prefer not to be an internet superstar like that. However... I don't know, maybe I'll be the first YouTuber to put his wood up on YouTube, who knows. Let's go ahead and take care of this right here. I've already got clothing on. I was thinking about that while I was making clothing. And I was like, can you imagine, like, the first caveman when somebody wore clothes for the first time? Can you imagine the conversation that just took place? Like, they had all been, like, walking around bucket-ass naked, like, from then on in. And then there's that one guy off in the corner. We'll call him Teddy for right now. And Teddy decided he was going to, like, invent clothing. It's chopped up like an animal and is, like, wearing it. And I like to assume that he didn't do it very well the first time. So it's, like, bleeding all over him. It's all nasty. All the other cavemen are like, oh, my God. You see over here? Look. Teddy. Teddy's got, like, skins all over his body. Why does he have those all over him right now? Why doesn't he just walk around naked like the rest of us? What a moron. Oh, my God. That can't technically. I have every tangible benefit. I bet that was a total waste of time. Teddy, you're such an idiot. Why'd you do that? Looking all warm inside your furs with them on your body over there. <laughs> Go ahead and throw that thatch wall. I don't know. I think I need one, two, three, four. I'm bad at counting. This might get a little rowdy. I'm going to say I need at least six. Probably seven. All right. So I'm going to put the door frame over here. I like it when it's offset. Some people don't. Actually, I could put it. Yeah, that'd be cool. Put it right there. That seems all right. And then we got to put a door in, obviously. So there's that right there. Hell yeah. And so let's go ahead and jump on into here. We're crafting walls at the moment. That should help us XP up a little bit. Although the number one way that I've personally found to level up the most rapidly if you've got to restart is just to kill stuff. Like find big herds of dodos and dilophosaurs. And if you can kill those off, you'll be good. Alright. This is looking pretty nice so far. It's looking pretty nice so far. Let's go ahead and take this over to this side. Yeah, I was going to say I need way, way more. It was like three times four. I'm sorry, three times three. I needed at least nine walls minus the one with the door in it. So I guess eight walls is what I actually needed. Unless I'm counting this wrong. I might be counting it wrong. My math skills have never been that great. Ah, oh, well, I can't do it on the fly either. Let's see here. We needed to go to... What do I need? Thatch walls. I needed more thatch. Well, hell, that's super easy to get. So if you're trying to get certain crafting materials... You actually want to use different tools. So if you use a pickaxe on a tree, you get thatch out. And you get less wood, but more thatch. If you use an axe on the tree, you get more wood, but less thatch. If you use a pickaxe on a dinosaur body, you get more meat, but less skins, I think. And if you use the axe on the body, I think you get... I don't know, with the, with the bodies, it might be a little bit... It might be a little bit different with the bodies. But anyways, I thought that I would let you know that using different tools will supply different results when you're crafting things. And then we also needed to make thatched roofing. And so this is going to be a little bit of a throwback for me. I used to be a roofer. I've talked about that on the channel before. Getting them flashings all in there. That's right. Roofers are known for flashings. So anyways, we'll go back over to this side of flashing. If you don't know what a flashing is, so in the gutters. Or I'm sorry. The, well, I guess the gutters could kind of count as a flashing, I guess. But anyways, flashing is basically like sheet metal that you use. So if you got like the valleys on the roof where like two of the planes intersect and you've got like that little gully right there. You would put a flashing in that to help the water flow more easily. And then, because water will be flowing more frequently through the valley, it actually wears away at the shingles or whatever's right there. So by putting a sheet of metal in the middle of there, it keeps the friction and it keeps the actual wear and tear from occurring. And so flashings, they can also be like the little vent covers that you put in right there. So if you look on top of houses, there's like little smoke stacky little, they're like, like little mini chimneys, things like that, fart vents, things of that nature. Yep, that's what we call them anyways. I don't know. We called them fart vents. I don't know if that's the technical term for them, but anyways, a fart vent is just like this little tiny vent that comes up off the bathroom. They all look the same in the United States. And so if a house has four bathrooms, you can figure you have to make four fart vents. And they're just like these little... It looks like the thing that's on top of the Tin Man's head, except a little bit bigger. Exact same thing, like an upside-down funnel. And you put like this weird little, I don't know, rubber condom over the top of it. And then you spray paint it to seal it. God, roofing sucked. It was the worst. If you're a roofer out there, I feel for you, man. 
I feel for it. I did that job for a long, long time. And that is just a heartbreaking profession. You wake up every day just like today is not gonna be de today is not gonna be better than yesterday, and tomorrow is not gonna be better than today. It is just gonna be tiring and miserable this entire time. Being up there on the roof. The smell of tar. That's what always reminds me of roofing, the smell of tar. That's what it always is, tar. And so for this, we're gonna need nine roof segments. Can I put a wall on top of a wall to make this a little bit taller? I don't know. It feels like it's going to be a little bit low set. Let me see if I can get this figured out real fast. What happened to the textures just now? I feel like all the textures just fell off. They're just like, ah, we don't feel like working anymore today. I think we're going to be done for right now. I'm going to call a break. I'm going to talk to my union manager. Once I talk to him, I'll decide if I can come back over at 4 o'clock. You want me to come back at 4 o'clock? I'll come back at 4 You want me to come back at 4 o'clock? Donnie. Donnie, I asked you. You want me to come back at 4 o'clock? Ah, I'll come back at 4 o'clock. Oh, Jesus. Anyways, these are the conversations that happen on a construction site, seriously, every single day. That and every single day somebody gets injured somehow. I don't think I've ever been on a construction site where there wasn't at least one injury a day of moderate caliber. <laughs> oh my god. But then again, part of it's just because like you zone out because you have no other choice. And so you will eventually do something stupid, I promise you. If you're going to be up on a roof anyways, I almost guarantee you're going to do something stupid. Because you have to zone out in order to keep your mind off the fact that it's like 120 degrees and there's boiling tar all around you and you're just like, uh It's it's bad. And then because there's boiling tar everywhere, you don't want to burn your skin. So then you got to wear like three layers of clothing when it's like 110 degrees out and it's just like, oh my god. Worst job ever. Although my personal favorite, my personal favorite is blowing insulation. So there's this big grinder machine that we had. And we had to blow insulation like into the attics and into like... The area underneath the roof so that you don't leak heat everywhere. And so we had to blow insulation and it's basically made out of like fiberglass or plexiglass. I don't remember. It's like fiberglass or something. It's annoying. It itches. It gets all over you. So you got to wear long sleeves, gloves, a face mask, a respirator, and everything else when you do it to make sure that it doesn't get in your lungs and like mess you up. Because when you're standing next to the big grinding thing, it's throwing all the random fibers all over the place into the air. Microscopic fibers that you can't see and they get inside of you and it's bad for you. So anyways, you got to wear respirators and everything else. And so you got like a gas mask on, on top of like three layers of clothing so that the fiberglass doesn't get into your skin because it takes forever to get that shit out and it itches all day if you get it in you. And then on top of that, it sucks the moisture out of the air and you take this big hose that goes into the machine that grinds up the fiberglass bricks. You gotta wait to make sure you don't chop your hand off with that bastard either because it's got a pretty big hole that you can shove the bricks in and believe me, you don't want to get your hand caught in there. It will be unpleasant. It will be a bad day for you. So anyways, once you get that done, you got to take this big hose and spray it everywhere, but it just gets everywhere. It is just awful. The joys of construction, kids. The joys of construction. It pays well, but God, is it miserable. God, is it miserable. Then again, I know other guys that are like... I know other guys in construction that do like sheet metal work and stuff like that, and they don't hate it quite as much. But roofing is definitely the end of the line as far as your enjoyment goes. So I wanted to play around with this. And can I put a wall on top of a wall and make this place taller? If I can, that's what I want to do. And so let me try it real fast. We got plenty of supplies right now. I could actually make this happen. And so since we got the thatch wall right there, let me see if I can sit a wall on top of a wall. If I can sit a wall on top of a wall, I prefer... Oh, I can. Well, damn. Our building just got a little bit bigger, didn't it? Okay. Well, let's make nine of these then. There we go. That's what I like to see. Actually, I may need another one because we're at and we're not filling in the door space this time. Pretty stoked about the construction in this game. I like the fact that it works and that I don't have to like sit here forever just to get it. Like I like how you can actually build like a simple shelter pretty quickly. Can I sit something on top of there? That's what I There we go. Awesome. Our house is so badass. I don't want to make it too tall though cuz then people will see it from the side of the river down there. The only thing that I don't like is I have to press the key every single time I want to put down a new thing, but maybe you can hold down shift or something to make that work better. How many more of these do I have coming along? A couple more. You get three, and then that'll be four. I'm going to need a couple more, I think, but we should be pretty close anyways. And we're about to level up too, which means we're about to get some more goodies. So let's go back in right here. Hopefully nobody decides to vandalize or destroy our shit. It'll be upsetting. We get two more over here. The only thing I want to destroy my shit is the sewage system. Yep, the public sewer system. Feel free to destroy my shit. However, everything else, leave it alone. That's my personal space. All right, so right here, we'll drop that in. Oh, we're looking so good right now. This house is going to be a giant target, though. I can tell already. 
Well, maybe. The rocks seem to block it off pretty well. That, and you can't get up on any of these spots, so either way, they gotta go all the way around that way, and then come back while keeping line of sight on the building. And I don't know if most people are gonna be determined enough to do that. We may get broken into, we may get robbed. I need more thatch, unfortunately. In fact, I need a lot of fibers as well. And it looks like we're hungry again, as always. So let me go ahead and use this. We haven't leveled up quite yet. I'm gonna eat like, I don't know, like 30 berries or whatever. Get those blueberries into me, even though they look like they're raspberries or something and then it's back to gathering up more stuff and talking about the construction industry but yeah I don't know there's different aspects to construction I guess it just kind of depends where you work and what you do I think it's pretty widely accepted that like nobody wants to be a roofer that was like my dad always talks with great pride about how that was like the first episode that Mike Rowe ever did on dirty jobs like my dad's always like it was the first one he ever did roofing although the one that I always remember from dirty jobs is where he has to go down into the bridge supports like 900 feet down into the bottom of a bridge support and it's like a jillion degrees down there and he's got a spray paint inside this little claustrophobic area I'm like, I couldn't do that job I'm not claustrophobic but I don't like tight spaces either like I'm okay as long as I've got like a little bit of space but if I have it like touching me on all sides that's that's too small I don't like it I'm the kind of person that likes to spread out a little bit like if I'm laying in a sleeping bag and my legs feel too constricted I can't sleep Let's go ahead and grab this over here, taken care of. I would be so worried about bugs going through all these bushes. Like, that is for realsies. Like, you want to imagine the size of the bugs in a world like this? They've got to be enormous, because everything else is enormous, too. The reason for that, it came up in the stream. Somebody asked me if I knew why that was, because they know I study paleontology. And yeah, it's because there's more oxygen in the air, as I recall. Things get bigger when there's more oxygen in the air, because you can soak your lungs up. You can afford to be larger, because your oxygen intake can be better. Whereas, there's like a hard cap right now, because... In the world we live in today, there's a lot less oxygen because there's a lot less rainforest and there's a lot less tropical stuff going on. And so anyways, in the modern world, there's less oxygen content in the air. And so there's actually like a natural limit on how big things can be because they can't properly saturate their lungs. It's the same reason why you don't see spiders above a certain size because their book lung would require a certain oxygen saturation in order for them to get much larger. And so once you get to a certain size of spider, they start to die off. Just it becomes a defect essentially. It's no longer kind of an evolutionary advantage. It becomes a defect. Is my meat spoiling right now? Like how much time do I have on that? Like nine? I think we should be able to get a Dilophosaur if we really apply ourselves. Let me see here. I want to get one by the end of the episode if I can. Let me get some roofs going, though. Oh, I needed more thatch. Damn it. I forgot about the thatch. Okay. So let's go grab ourselves some thatch real quick. I also think that if I can get this thing training before we go any further, I'm going to try and knock it out. I mean, I could get... We got a level up. I could make a slingshot, I guess. That would make life easier. You can knock stuff out with a slingshot in case you didn't know. I'm going to go with a little bit more stamina because whenever I run out, it makes me want to cry. And then we'll go after that right there. I don't have a storage box, but I'm going to take a slingshot and a sleeping bag so that I can respawn if I need to. And then on that side, let's go ahead and get some thatch. I think I'll also try and get down here. We might make a slingshot right there, so we'll craft you on up. I don't know how many stones I have at the moment, but I would assume that I have enough to knock out a Dilophosaur. We're a little bit dehydrated. So we should probably go for a dip. Yeah, I got 18 stones. We'll be all right. Now that we have ourselves a nice little private place to live, I'm hoping what sometimes happens is I'll pick a server and I'll be really, really excited about it because it'll be like right next to the place where I live. Like right now, the latency on the server is like 20 MS, so I know it's got to be really, really close. It's probably in San Jose or something like that. Judging, there's a lot of server hosting in San Jose in case you didn't know. Fun facts about the Bay Area and the area surrounding. There's a lot of server hosting in San Jose. For whatever reason, they always host out of San Jose, even though there's bigger cities around. I don't know why that is. I am ignorant. However... I don't see any dinos around. I got spawned into this map in a weird spot earlier. And it was kind of crazy. Will you stop moaning and groaning? It'll be fine, I promise. I'm going to get you fed in just a minute. I'm going to sprint you over here. Unfortunately, our sprint is a lot worse when we're dehydrated. But Oh, look, those trees right there. Best place to train an animal ever, in case you were wondering, because they always get stuck in those trees. I will use that right there. That should allow us to get our water back up to maximum. Just in case you needed a little bit more mum in your day, that laser right there, I would go over there and show it to you. It's a storage chest for a supply drop, but it's higher level than we are, so there's really no point going over there. Instead, what I'm going to do is let's equip our... Where's it at? Slinga shot. There it is. So there's our slinga shot. Now that we have slung our shot, I think I'll look out for a dinosaur. I know I saw one. There he is. What's up, d -Lo? New d -Lo? 
The downside to this... Oh, hell. He seems upset about the fact that I hit him in the face with a rock. There we go, we knocked him out. And so now that he's unconscious, what we need to do... We need to open his inventory, and we're going to throw all this meat in here. And once the meat's inside of him, the other thing we got to do is put narco berries in his inventory. And he should sit here, and he'll eat the meat whenever he gets hungry, and it'll just train him on up. And so because he hasn't eaten anything just yet, I don't think... It should work perfectly fine. This is how I trained the last one. It takes a long ass time though, so we may have to take a little hiatus here. But I'm gonna gather up some thatch while we do it, and then I'll make some of the extra parts that I need. If you heard that noise right there, he's eating the food. We're nurturing, just in case you wanted to nurture a dinosaur anytime soon. Now the downside to this is while you're online, in single player when you log off, the dinosaur no longer loses hunger. But in single player, the food still decays. I'm sorry, in multiplayer, the food still decays. And then on top of that, they can die of starvation while you're not online. And so, I don't know exactly how to fix that. It's one of those things where I think you have to have homies and friends. So this might be a very, very temporary dinosaur friend for us. You gotta take narco berries, and if you wanted to keep them knocked out, you take the narco berries and you remote use them. But for this recording session, we'll have ourselves a Dilophosaur for a little bit, which I think will be fun. I'm gonna gather up some random fibers while we wait. It usually takes, depending on the dinosaur, it could take anywhere from between like 15 minutes to around four to five hours I've heard for like a T-Rex. Somebody trained a T-Rex. It only took two days before somebody trained a T-Rex for the first time. And I think they said that it took around four and a half hours or so for them to train one. But I also read somewhere that as you train dinosaurs, you get better at it so that you can train a dinosaur much more quickly and with less resources. And so I don't know how much that's gonna play in. There's a lot of grass around here. So I'm gonna try and be very, very careful about the area where I'm working here. Let me get some more thatch. Ooh, that was a good tree right there. That tree was a ringer for me. ring a ding ding a ding a ding Okay, so we'll get a little bit more thatch on this side. I like the fact that we're still accomplishing things. Like, there's still, like, resources and stuff around for me to complete my goals with. Check on D'Lo real fast. D'Lo numero du. And D'Lo's looking pretty good. Taming effectiveness is low. Don't punch the dinosaur. As I said, give him narco berries. It'll keep him knocked out. If you watch, his little unconsciousness meter will go back up. And so that's what you're looking for right there. And it shouldn't take, I think we have enough meat right now to where he should join our side without too many problems. So without further ado, since we don't have a whole lot going on right now, I'm going to wait till he's trained. Once he is then our friend, I shall start up the next episode, okay? I'll see you all there. Hi, do everybody.